There are a few stages, uh, four stages that we typically talk about with hypothermia. So we have a mild hypothermia, which takes our body temperature down to about 95 degrees Fahrenheit. And in this condition, they are typically still uh, responsive, maybe shivering, you see the, the goosebumps on them, um, and they, they just can tell you that they feel cold, but they're generally still awake. And as long as we move them to a warmer environment, get them out of any wet clothing, replace that with dry clothing, um, maybe make them active a little bit, give them something hot to drink or warm to drink or eat, um, they'll generally be able to recover from that. One of the other sort of signs that we think about with hypothermia, especially more the mild hypothermia, is something we call the umbles. Our patients tend to grumble, so they're, they're a little irritable. They stumble, so they, they have a hard time coordinating. They fumble, so they can't do much with their, their hands. They lose their fine motor control. Uh, so fumble, grumble, mumble, stumble, um, all these umbles uh, we see in patients that are uh, with mild hypothermia. When we get into more moderate hypothermia, we see temperatures from about 95 degrees all the way down to 90 degrees Fahrenheit. And these patients are beginning to become less responsive. They may have stopped shivering, so they're not going to be generating as much of their own heat. Um, slower heart rate, slower respiratory rates, and uh, the greater concern with these patients because they cannot actively warm themselves up. So we'll need some sort of heat source, heating lamp or heating blanket to help warm them up. When we get below 90 degrees, we get into severe hypothermia. This generally goes down or to about the 70s, um, low 80s or 70s. Some sources say different things, but usually think 70s. And these patients are oftentimes unresponsive. They feel very cold to the touch. They may feel a little stiff. Um, and we need to be very gentle with them. If we jostle these patients too much, we can actually cause ventricular fibrillation. And if that's the case, we can still use AEDs. We'll still do CPR, just like we normally would. Just realize that medication use, if we give any medications for cardiac arrest, that the body's not gonna be able to metabolize those. So we need to give them typically at a slower um, or longer time frame, slower dosing schedule, is what I was gonna say, but we have more time between doses. And then we can get into um, profound hypothermia if we get below that, and the patient's generally unresponsive. They may not have any signs of life. Um, the heart may be only beating a couple of times a minute, probably not breathing. And generally we're gonna be doing CPR on these patients. And remember, we have a saying that they're not dead until they're warm and dead. And that means that if somebody is hypothermic, the protective effects of hypothermia will allow someone to be near death or in cardiac arrest and be resuscitated successfully much longer than the normal thermic cardiac arrest. So if you have someone that's fallen through ice or been out in the snowbank or is hypothermic in a cardiac arrest, we usually recommend that we try to resuscitate them until we can get them to the hospital and do some active rewarming to try to warm the body temperature or bring the body temperature back up to normal, warm them up. And if they warm up and they're still in cardiac arrest, then we might go ahead and uh, cease resuscitation efforts at that time. So that's a little bit about hypothermia.